All right, I got one. You got one what? Um, you said I can have something. So this is what I want. I'm gonna go ahead and take this. When did I say that? This one's not good. No, I don't. I don't think I ever said that. What are you? What are you getting now? All right, can I? I'm gonna go ahead and take this one then. No. So I'll just. Uh, thanks. I appreciate it. Don't you get enough toys? Don't you have enough? Why are you gonna take my stuff? I, well, you said I can have some. No, I never said that. What? Can we just go play a game? That'd be awesome, instead of you trying to steal my toys. All right, I'll just put this back, and yeah. you, you go, I'll, I'll follow you. Oh, you'll follow me. Yeah. How about you go put that back first, and then I watch you go that way, so I can make sure that you don't have any sticky fingers on your way out. Yeah, yeah I just I think you trust me I, by now. What the, like, I'm just going to steal your toys? I thought you said that I could have something, so that's, no. that's why I was just going to Dude, bring something. Ring up back. What are you doing? That's a power lord, man. Welcome to an all-new episode of Board. We're your hosts. I'm Duvall. And I'm Pixel Dan. You know, this show is all about uh, us showing you the best and worst of board games from the 50s to today. But unfortunately, before we get to any board game action, we have to get in here, behind us, where Puppet Duvall lives. <sighs> which is not Dan's favorite part of this at all. Not even kind of. Um... The lights are scary. I don't know why the lights happen still. We haven't figured it out. He's got some kind of weird powers, but if you see, the door won't open unless Puppet Duvall decides to open it. So let's get this out of the way. I'm not, are you ready for this? I'm never ready for this, but whatever, let's do it. It should be interesting. Getting a game, getting a game, we're getting a game. Ah! Uh, God. Oh, I hate it every time. Is it supposed to feel like chlorine in your eyes? Uh, it burns so bad. So bad. Uh, uh. Why are you beckoning us this time? That doesn't make any sense. That's really weird. You realize that, right? And really, with the lights, every time we have to do that? <laughs> Where does that come from? There's no power in there. There's not even a light bulb in there. So, hey, how about a board game? Can we can we have one? That'd be great. Whoa! Bigfoot, the giant snow monster. Game. Well, that's unique. I like it. Me too. Kind of excited to play it. Hey, thank. Thanks. What is why is it called Bigfoot, the giant snow monster game? Do they realize Bigfoot and Yeti are two different things? That is the most creepy looking. But look at Bigfoot. He's creepy. I like it. Let's go play it. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Sure, I'll lose. Where is? Mm. It's the weirdest thing. My closet. Ah. All right. Bigfoot the Giant Snow Monster Game. Yes. Welcome back to another episode of Board, guys. This time, we're hanging out and playing the awesome Bigfoot the Giant Snow Monster Game. I don't know why it's called the Giant Snow yeah, Monster Yeah, why isn't game? this called Yeti the Giant Snow Monster Game? Or just Bigfoot, the giant monster game. It seems a little weird. Or it's Bigfoot, like, he hides in the forest. Well, that, yeah, that's basically the same thing I just said. But you it. Anyway, it's a little confused, I think, because it's obviously, well, he's brown like Bigfoot. He's not white like a Yeti, but, but he's a snow monster. And why does, uh, he's creepily looking over the kid's shoulder. He's like, ooh. He's like, hey, guys, how about you play my board game with me? That's how he talks. Oh my god. I like games! I would have been terrified. <laughs> That's the scariest thing. I'm pretty excited. I think we should bust this thing open and give it a shot. I think so too. I'm just still transfixed by the fact that the little boy and Bigfoot are 
Like the little boy's got his hands on Bigfoot, and the Bigfoot's got his arm around the little girls. He's just look. They're just playing games. Come on, kids, let's play my game. It's just, they're just all they're doing. Kids, if a strange Bigfoot comes up to you in the middle of a forest while you're playing a board game at a random table next to a tree, and puts his arm around you, tell a grown-up. Well, I mean, but if you're playing Bigfoot the game, it's probably okay. All right, I'll go with that. That works. <laughs> let's bust it open and see what Bigfoot the giant snow monster game really entails. Yeah. All right, let's get the board. That's, again, creepy. Creepy, creepy, creepy. And fun. It looks fun. And creepy. This is not creepy. It's, it's creepy. Play my game. All right, so let's see. We've got, we've got our playing board. Ooh, look at that. I yeah, know, it's kind of neat. It is in the snow. Big, Bigfoot, the, the, see this just says Bigfoot game. Bigfoot game. Yeah, yeah. I like it. So, and then we have a bag full of stuff here. Let's just dump those out there. Stuck. I'm stuck. Got it. I'm stuck. There we go. So we got a dice. We've got these. I'm not sure what those are yet. We'll figure that out. There's a whole bunch of those. Uh, Bigfoot cards. Move Bigfoot. Move any token. Those. Oh, these are the tokens. Oh, those are the tokens, eh? One dice. Cards. And then there's the crown jewel of this game. Be very cool. Bigfoot himself. <laughs> Look at this guy. Now this is kind of cool. Guys. This is kind of neat because in here he's got these, um, basically the gameplay is he, when he moves and he lands on the spot, you would push him down and he would leave little tokens. Ooh, look at that. That's, that's nifty. Yeah. So that's the whole idea behind uh, Mr. Bigfoot there. Cool. It's kind of cool. So not a lot to the board game, but there's enough there to make it very interesting. So let's uh, well, let's figure out how to play it. Let's let's see what it takes to load Mr. Bigfoot back up here with foots and get underway. So to load up Bigfoot here, you take these white discs, some of which have little feet on them there, and stack them in a random order, feet facing up, and pop them in one at a time into the section underneath Bigfoot's feet. Cool. Next, you shuffle up the Bigfoot cards, and then place them off to the side of the board. And what about all these player tokens? Do we just pick a color? Well, no, actually, see in a four player game, all the players would have two tokens of the same color, but here, since it's just you and I, we each get four color tokens. And where do they go? Well, you can put them on any space here on the board, but be sure to keep them away from Bigfoot's cave. But what if my token wants to hang out, you know, and watch TV and no, stuff? No, Danny, no. Creepy Bigfoot, uh, remember? Creepy. Okay, okay. So what's left? Well, let's roll the dice and see who goes first. Four. Five. I go first again. All right, settle down. Place Bigfoot on his cave, and let's get this game underway. <laughs> Sounds good. Good roll there, hero. No, 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 it's fine. Look, landing on one of these blue spaces allows you to draw a card. Though, protection from Bigfoot. Ha <laughs> ha, rock! So what do the rest of these cards do? Well, you have cards that move you to the North Pass. The Mining Town. The Supply Store. The Lumber Mill. The Gold Mine. And the Fishery. Now, these are great because you can use them many times to your advantage by moving an opponent's piece to a spot that may be in the path of an oncoming Bigfoot. Boom! Take that. Dang it! Then there's the card to move one of your tokens to a safety space, which is cool because on these spaces, if Bigfoot ambles over you during the gameplay and you're on that space, he can't get you. And lose your next turn. Ah, boo! Ha <laughs> ha! And then there are the Bigfoot cards. Now they allow you to move Bigfoot to any unoccupied space. Move any token next to Bigfoot. 
and move any token to Bigfoot's cave. And what about that Bigfoot protection card you drew? Yeah, you see, you can use that when your opponent moves Bigfoot towards you. And you can play that card, placing it over your token, and it protects you from the big guy. Nice! Okay, my turn. Two. Now, which one? Which one? This one! Oh, look! Move Bigfoot to any unoccupied space. Right next to you. Hmm, hate you. My turn. Four! Where to move? Where to move? Oh, look! A Bigfoot space! So what does that do? When you land on a yellow Bigfoot space, such as this one, allow you to control Bigfoot. But once you land on it, you roll the dice, and then move Bigfoot that number of spaces. And if you cross a player token as you move him? And then he stomps that token. And if he leaves a footprint, he scares that player's token off the board. So if he hits every one of your colors, easy game over, right? Well, no. See, he's actually only allowed to scare away one token of any color per turn. Now, this keeps it fair. Gotcha. So what about the red Bigfoot spaces? They say double. Yep, landing on one of these spaces, you get control of Bigfoot, much like the other one, with the extra added addition of doubling your Bigfoot roll. Like here, I rolled a 6, so I get to move Bigfoot 12 spaces instead of the 6 rolled. Boo! Another piece of mine is scared off the board. Haha, <laughs> take that! And with all that out of the way, play continues, with players rolling and moving their tokens, drawing cards, landing on the Bigfoot spaces, and scaring off tokens. Anything special happen when we each only have one token apiece left? Yep, when there's just one token left for each player, all the Bigfoot spaces become doubles. Yikes! Well, keeps the game from slowing down to a crawl at that point. When all but one token has been scared off the board, the last token's player is declared the winner! <laughs> oh, no, come on, man. Oh, on. here comes Bigfoot. Here comes Bigfoot. Dude. Uh-oh. Oh. oh, that is it. Look, look. Last footprint means your piece is out, and I got one piece in. That means I win again. Bigfoot party dance. Bigfoot party dance. Hey, you won my game. I know. I'm so good at these games. You are like champion Bigfoot. What? <laughs> Whoa, hey! What? Making Bigfoot stop on my hand? Jeez. Yikes, yikes. Well, despite the fact that you lost, are you, what do you think? You know, for a game made in the mid-70s, it's a very interesting game. It's it's actually plays very quickly. Um, I imagine it goes a little faster with multiple players. Oh, yeah. Uh, with yeah. two players, though, controlling, you know, two of each color. It went by really quickly, and it is, it's is—it's rather fun because there really isn't much of a goal other than constantly trying to move away from the Bigfoot monster. Right. So if somebody lands on Bigfoot, he's not going to come stomp you. But there's always that game of chances. Is it going to be a footprint? Is it going to be a blank? How did the last person that loaded Bigfoot load them? Because they know. So it's like, what... You know, what, 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 right. there's a lot of variables in that. There's a lot of luck on the draw kind of thing with yes. the Bigfoot, but there is some fun strategy involved too because you're trying to move your pieces away from Bigfoot, but at the same time, you're doing everything you can to try to trap your, yes. your competitors into the path of Bigfoot. So, you know, you get those cards that tell you you can move any token to, you know, Mining Town. Well, if that's in Bigfoot's way, you're probably going to want to put your competitors, that's right, your opponent's token right there in Mining Town, and that way, if you get Bigfoot, boom, they're right there in the trajectory. Yep. And I like the fact that, you know, not only do you have the normal Bigfoot yellow square, the yellow circles, but you also have these red doubles. And the fact that once you hit a double and you roll the dice, you're moving Bigfoot the double of that dice roll. So if you which, roll a six, he's moving 12 spaces. Which gives you the potential of him just bowling over like three guys at once sometimes, which but, is really cool. But the thing that keeps it fair, though, is that you can't, if it's three of the if it's like two of the same color and a right. different color, and all three of those get footprints, you can only take two of those off the board. You can't take all three because that would be really unfair with this game. Right. Um, and the cool thing is, is once it's down to just a token, a person, um, then every Bigfoot space becomes double spaces. So he just constantly is 
traversing that board, you know, right over, just trying to over, knock out that yeah. last token. Yep. So yeah, I think it's really fun. I love the big foot piece. I'm always a big fan of these big, like figure like pieces and yes. board games. Yeah. And he's definitely a very, very cool piece. So I think it's a lot of fun. It's really cool. It's a, it's a very cool game. I mean, it's, it's something that if you happen across and you, you want to find it, uh, you should, probably should, should pick it up. It's a Milton Bradley game, which means it's pretty solid. The rules aren't that bad. They're no, not. It's, it's very simple and straightforward. I think anybody, once you pick this up and figure it out, it's very easy to pick up and play and even play through again and again once you're done. This is one of those games you could totally be like, I win, okay, set everything back up, let's play a second game, because yeah. it's just simplistic it's just and fun. constant, so. constant fun, which yeah. makes it really easy. And, of course, the Bigfoot is super simple to just load up with the discs. I mean, it's, you know. Yeah, there's not a lot of setup on this no, one, which I no. like. Yeah, yeah not, like, not like last week's where there was, you know, <laughs> lots of right, lots of setup. But... Overall, it's a great game, and uh, I had a lot of fun until I lost. Until you lost. Because I'm the Bigfoot champion. He even said so. Hey, Duvall, Pixel Dan is really good at this game. <laughs> ah, see? Yeah. He knows exactly how good I am at Bigfoot. this game. Yeah. Didn't talk to Bigfoot, Bigfoot. Yeah. Just tell him how good hey, Bigfoot, I am at this game. Hey, Bigfoot, tell everybody we'll see them next week on board. I'll see you next week on board. Oh, no! Hey, whoa! Ah, my eye, you jerk. Hey guys, Duvall here. You know, if you have questions, comments, concerns, artwork, anything you want to send Dan and I's way and you want us to answer it, send it to board at toyworldorder.com. At the end of the season, we'll actually produce a special episode where we answer all of your fan questions, talk about a lot of the stuff from this season of board, and show off some of the great artwork that you, the fans, send in. So make sure you send those to board at toyworldorder.com. While you're doing that, why don't you check out last week's episode? That'd be awesome if you missed it. It's right there. Just click on it. Cool. Awesome. See you next week, gang.